Hello, Guardians, and welcome to Destiny Reset, episode 169. This show is about anything and everything related to the Destiny franchise. If you love playing Destiny 2 as much as we do, you're in the right place. This reset, we head deep into the Haunted Forest to celebrate Festival of the Lost, talk about what improvements could be made to the vendors in the tower, and get heavy into the grind for the most elusive guns. <laughs> Hello Guardians and welcome. It's Arrow Knight and of course Cyborg Sasquatch. Hello friend. Hello. How are you? I'm doing great man. How are you this evening? I'm great dude. I'm great. A uh, little tired but uh, excited to talk some Destiny here for a little while. Perfect. It's late. That's, That's what I'm we're tired. here for. The listeners don't know. It's We're starting even late for us. These things happen. And that's late. Yep. If anybody knows uh, your playtime and your normal fire team circle, your typical fire team that you play with, all my friends know that if I'm on, it's usually probably after 11 p.m. <laughs> and that's yeah, early. I called out on Twitter this week for being a vampire, gaming yep. vampire. <laughs> yep, Somebody yep. saw me like doing things on Twitter. They're like, what are you still doing awake? <laughs> <laughs> I know I post a random clips throughout the week and it's at like two in the morning. Um, it's prime time, yeah. baby. Yep. Prime game. Things time. get done. <laughs> well, oh. um, how about some announcements? Yes. Um, yes, of course. We got an exciting one. We, uh, we did what we said we were going to do, like we do, and we posted a tweet last week. Our uh, sponsor uh, and partner, Blue Microphones, gave us some nice, sweet loot to give away. We asked you guys to check out their products and follow and retweet what we sent out. And we've got ourselves a winner, Cyborg, don't we? I think we do here in the show notes. That's right. It's celebrity musician and comedian Jack Black. <laughs> Just kidding. I don't it's know if it's the original some, account. Somebody with the Twitter handle. At Jack Black three one zero six zero one, you congratulations are the of Guardian. your choice of blue microphone swag. You get to choose between a blue Yeti, a blue Nano, uh, blue Lolas, a Compass boom arm. I think there's choose like one or two one. other things. We'll we'll let you know. Hit us up on Twitter. <laughs> we'll we'll get something going your way. Direct from Blue's Shipping Center. From they ship anywhere in the world. Yes, they congratulations do. and thanks to Blue for the uh, swag to give away to this listener. Keep Good listening; stuff. we give these away all the time. All right, man. Um, one other quick reminder to our listeners: if you didn't catch the announcement last week, we are now airing on Dash Radio. If you're not familiar with Dash. I think it's dash radio.com right i believe so i'm gonna double check that url yeah dash radio.com or you can download the app on any mobile device um tablet if you've got a chevrolet or ford uh late model vehicle you can put dash radio in there as well and you can catch our first airing every tuesday at 2 p.m pacific standard time and then we're on four other days of the week uh, check our Twitter for air times. So another way you can listen to Destiny Reset during your week. Do it, Guardians. I caught it last week, man, and I got to say, uh, it's pretty cool. Uh, I caught ours and just to see how it was and a couple Does others on the multiplayer channel. Well, I mean, I don't know how you can get much cooler sound than you, Cyborg, but yeah, you now you sounded pretty good, buddy. I'm always going for <laughs> perfection. <laughs> uh, I got a couple other shows too, and I gotta say, multiplayer channel on Dash Radio is pretty neat. Uh, we'll be throwing up a tweet too uh, here this next reset. Be looking for it with uh, times and such, so you guys can actually see it in text form. Maybe it'd be a little easier to to notate in your brain. Yeah. All right. Cool stuff. Dash Radio. Well, I think it's Thank time you, for the news. You ready? I think so. I think so. It's a little light on news this week, but we've still got something to talk about. Always. This week at Bungie, 
Festival of the Lost continues to serve up frights. <laughs> uh, they're hosting the Festival of the Lost costume contest. Always love these. From now through 6 p.m. Pacific on October 31st, which you may miss that cut off by the time you hear this. When is the 31st? No, you will you still might have time. That's Wednesday. Got a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, you can use Thanks. masks, armor, and shaders to create an in-game costume, pick the perfect setting, and take a pick. Then use the hashtag Festival of Costumes hashtag. Share your screenshot to the community creations page, Twitter, or Instagram to enter. Ten winners will be celebrated via Bungie on Halloween Day and treated with the unique emblem we reserve for all our best artists. Group shots are welcome. Humor and courage. Put on a mask and go show the bad guys they can't keep us down. You gonna put on a costume and enter this? I probably will not. Um... I have an idea. Unless I can work something up. I, I don't plan to, I guess, is my answer. Um, Mine might but... be lame, but I'm going to try it. <laughs> good luck to any other Guardian that is. Yeah. It's good stuff. I always love these. I've seen some funny ones already on Twitter. They crack yeah, me that's up. Always fun. People get creative. Well, next up, we're talking about the patch coming update 2.0.5. That I believe is dropping at reset on Tuesday the 30th. I am looking forward to this patch, and I'm going to tell you why in a minute. <laughs> Me too, man. Me but too. there's a whole bunch of really great quality of life stuff in here that we have really needed. One, first, Banshee44, the gunsmith, will accept up to 25 gunsmith materials at a time instead of 10. So you only have to mash the button four times per patch. <laughs> How many it gunsmith materials do you have? Well, when Forsaken launched, I had over 2,000. And then I I think they dropped down to like twelve or 1,300. I just kind of goofed around. I didn't get rid of all of them. I think I'm back up to like 2,100 again now. I have over 6,000 gunsmith materials wow. right now. Did you burn any in Forsaken to try to get like some rolls I on did, some things? Yeah, I did, yeah. I burned a couple grand. Wow, um, dude. That's a lot. In the first I usually set weeks. around fifteen hundred to two grand somewhere in there. There's, I think that there's two vendors that really need some love. We've talked Dude. about Zer. Mm -hmm. You've talked about Zer in some of your YouTube stuff. It's crazy. Actually, I actually haven't released a video on that yet, but I've been yes on Twitter. Been I think you've been collecting some feedback, right? Yes. I'm interested to see kind of what you put together there. I think there's a ton that can be done, but the other one is the gunsmith. So much so. Yep. You know, if you if you didn't play Destiny 1 or if you don't remember, around the Taken King, they, they did a lot with the gunsmith. There was a whole bunch of things that he could do for you. You mm -hmm. could uh, pick up test weapons and go out and test them and then turn them back in. And it would give you, I think it was a, a material or just an ability. If you did a certain number of them, of the gunsmith bounties or something like that, then you could place orders with the gunsmith on arms day or before arms day. And then every arms day, every week you would get in some weapons that had chances at random rolls. And that it was a cool system. Yeah. You know, yeah. it wasn't perfect. And I think something to like after a little while, everybody kind of stopped paying attention to it once they got their God rolls, but it was a cool concept. Now, he just has, you know, some mods, a couple mods for sale every day. Uh, you can get packages that have a very limited loot pool. I think that's my main complaint mm -hmm. is his loot pool is so small. Yeah. I, I get gunsmith. more stuff. You should have a bunch, right? Yeah, I, I get more stuff that I want playing the game than from him. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah, there's uh, there's so much that can be done with him. Him and Zer, like it just it just seems like uh, of the many things that uh, they've done unbelievably well in Forsaken. There's there's just a few things like that, like the gunsmith Zer Zer. I wish they could figure out Zer. Um, and then yeah. you know the uh, the rotating random rolls on stuff. Maybe I've mentioned that on the show before, but like Shax mm -hmm. has been selling the same hand cannon and the same armor 
yeah. home with the same perks this entire time. It was so nice. We just got back to them rotating like every week. Right. Um, so, you know, just a little stuff like that you start to notice after a while. Um, still, still not crazy um, noticeable with so much to do in the game right now, but still important things. Um, I don't know if you caught it this week, but our buddy, um, shout out to uh, I Am Cool Guy, he released a gunsmith video this week, dude, and he had so many good ideas. His and I'm sure maybe some from his community. Just oh, I need the to bounty check that stuff, out, the um, just many that I had never even really thought of. Um, just really good ideas for the gunsmith, and uh, you're 100 percent right. It would be it would just be neat to see that character. I mean, it's neat that he does have daily. It's nice that it's daily rotating mods, um, but I can't buy any of them anyway. So <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Yeah, uh, but yeah, yeah. you know, um, it's uh, there's plenty of room for him to grow. I hope we see it. I mean, yeah. we got Black Armory coming up, so if he was ever going to grow, granted, we might be getting some other vendors. Yeah, um, I think that we're might just, be the time to do it. We're getting, you know, we're we're well into the end game of Forsaken, and when you get so to that point, you start things. to work on what they call your uh, horizontal progression, which is. Yeah. You know, curating your gear and loadouts and loadouts, exploring yep. the world in more detail. And um, vendors, I think, can provide a lot, um, I don't know, a lot of depth that isn't mm-hmm. there that used to, I feel like we used to have a lot of depth or at least some yeah. depth with the vendors and um, different stuff that you could buy from them. And I yeah. don't know. Well, we had just gotten back to... Um, yeah, Rotating where they would sell vendor stock. Yeah, stuff, inventory. Yeah. Um, you know, it's maybe just an oversight with everything else. I mean, there's so much to do in the game and so many good things. I, but, I, uh, you, you know, know those kind of things are important. I think that um, that might be one of those things that fell. Yeah, like uh, we got extremely important things to do. <laughs> well, it's. I, I think that that improvement is like they, they made that improvement, I think, in not as part of the expansions, but I think the live team made some of those improvements. Yeah. But in the meantime, they were developing Forsaken. And I think it's one of those things that didn't get carried with it. You know, Mm -hmm. I mean, we, we, we saw an extreme version of that from destiny one to two. Right. I think that this is a, a small casualty of that development cycle that it's probably something they got, kind of engineered out or or had to get cut Mm -hmm. to which in the end i think we all have kind of learned you know that there's a a finite amount of content and stuff that gets created with everything right we know that so in the end i i much prefer that we have a lot of things to do you know there's a huge amount of like activities and different stuff to chase and that's cool so i just hope that like as they develop the game over this next year or so that maybe they'll maybe they'll have some time to come in like give the gunsmith a rework gives her a rework Mm -hmm. maybe give a pass at you know shacks and zavala and some of that stuff so we can yeah get some cool gear yeah it's just it's such a delicate balance with all of that um getting the timing right there man of of having a lot to do, but then also only three months in a season. And yeah, you, you, as a player, you expect, you know, at a certain point, it's like we, we said so long and so long, like we want more to do, more to do, more to do. I have had that moment a few times in the season. I'm like, okay, I've got so much to do I, I think that I want season. to get to a point where I can start focusing on like my yeah. loadouts and this or that. Yeah. And I'm, I'm still... I'm I'm there, but you still feel with like the balance you're trying to play yeah. catch up, right? Right, yeah, yeah. And you know, at some point you just I would rather we've talked about this on the show already. I'd rather have too much to do and I've just gotta decide what's important to me and what I wanna yeah. do. Um, you know, and then there's then you tie in the balance of um the economy and materials and can you like mods we talked about, you know, like then can, is that in place to where you can start focusing on like the horizontal progression, like you talked about. And there's just, there's so much at play, man. Like how you even know how to get all that right. I mean, it just takes iteration after iteration. And I'd say we're the closest we've ever been for sure. And and I think this season is going to be, my guess is going to be the heaviest where we feel that the most because there's so many new things 
and then there was a whole really big expansion to play through and you know there's just so much and i I think there will be plenty of new stuff to do with the season pass or the annual pass as they're calling it but it won't be as much to have to chew through right as forsaken that's a, that's um, a really good point too about this this season in particular this first season um, yeah because you usually spend like much more two three weeks just getting through the the main content right at least right yep. then you kind of get to start to look at um kind of the ancillary quests and chases for lack of a better term of okay you know I'm going to spend time going after uh, Luna's Howl, or I'm going to spend time going after uh, Gear for Gambit or the Meatball, or, you know, whatever it is that gets you excited. You kind of start to work on that after a few weeks. And then the closer and closer we get, I'm like, all right, man, we're like five, six weeks probably away <laughs> from Black Armory. Like, I really got to plan every reset for the next six weeks, you know? <laughs> right. Exactly. Hopefully. Yep. My hope is, you know, we might have a little downtime um, towards the end of November where, you know, there's not quite as packed in as, as things to do. And then um, Black Army will show up and we'll have a bunch of new stuff to chase after, you know. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, I think getting back to, you know, the original thing we were talking about is hopefully uh, with that also, you know, the first season for us and them just being so packed full with what needs to be done and what can be done. Hopefully, yeah, in the, the seasons to come, that'll give them time to maybe focus on vendor rotating roles and and uh, the gunsmith and Zer and things like that. Zer is such a, always a topic, man. Uh, at some point, I hope they find the sweet spot with Zer. You know, he needs, he definitely can be more than exotics and he needs to have stuff that we want to go back and see him every week, even yeah. two months into a season, and you know something like that. Maybe catalysts. I've I've heard maybe something with bounties. Maybe something with something. I want, I want um, Zer to have his own quests, and he he yeah has like mic chat interact. Like you know when you do strikes and you're interacting with one of the NPCs, oh, yeah, I want cool. him to be like yeah yeah guardian. I think we'd even be <laughs> fine with uh, having weekly time gates on stuff like you got yeah. a week to do this step. And then go see him the next week and yeah. give me multiple steps. Like, give me stuff to do. I'm cool with something that. Something for Zer. Anyways, Zer well, we're going to talk about exotics in a minute. Oh, yeah. Uh, but now that we've got item one on the patch notes down, let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, moving on. Uh, removing the hold time for spiders' material exchange interactions. So they essentially, if, if I'm understanding this the way I think I am... The longer, um, I think this is what it's referring to. When you were trying to purchase a material, say a masterwork core from the spider, the more that you bought, the longer you would have to hold the button to purchase it. (laughs) Such a detailed thing. Do you think that's what this is? I think so. That's the way I understood it, yeah. I'm not 100% because it... I don't know. I think that's what they're talking about. So we'll see. Uh, Increasing stack size of ghost fragments from 10 to 20. That definitely needed to happen. Um, Reduced shader dismantle time from one second to 0.25 seconds. That should definitely help. So basically just a button tap, it seems. So I've got to go back and do some stuff on Tangle Shore, dude, because I went to... Like last this reset and last reset, I went to do my weekly one, my weekly wanted bounty, because I, as you know, as many guardians know, I'm sure that one's known to drop exotics, yes. um, and I don't have any ghost fragments. Like I haven't been doing anything. I'm yeah. sure <laughs> I need it to be the flashpoint again. Uh, well, and you can get them pretty quick too. Like yeah. you just do a couple patrols and a take thirty minutes. Event, five not even that. Seven. I mean, like ten minutes, you can have the five. Yeah. I just long. have been been spending zero time. <laughs> yeah, well, I you know I find myself way more in the Dreaming City than Tangled mm-hmm. Shore, which you spend a ton of time in the Tangled Shore during the campaign and even after. Mm-hmm. But once you move into the Dreaming City, that's where all the action is, you know. Right. Yeah. But it's a really cool zone. Uh, I like it a lot. I love the I love the atmosphere that the Tangled yeah. Shore has, and the music. 
it's just really moody and stuff. It's, it's cool. Yeah, it's a cool place. I agree. Um, all right, let's talk about exotic duplicate waiting. So it's funny. I was just talking about this with some of my buds um, earlier this week. We were talking about exotics. We were complaining, and uh, <laughs> we kind of realized that because when we talk about exotic drop rates and how things work, you know, usually we we kind of compare it to different eras where they've worked differently, right? Mm -hmm. So we were kind of talking about year one of Destiny, and then we're talking about the Take It King, and then year three, and just how over time things have evolved. And then Destiny 2, you just got tons of exotics all the time, right? Right. Um, and I kind of realized that the position that we're in now with exotics and how they drop and the drop rates and everything is is totally different most people are comparing it to destiny one year one where exotics were very very rare and that's true the drop rate feels similar the difference however is destiny one year one the whole loot pool was new right and so even though they were rare you were way more likely to actually get something you didn't have and now the case is that the drop rate is really rare, but there's a whole bunch of stuff in the loot pool. The majority of the loot pool is stuff that you probably already have. And so mm -hmm. it seems like it's the worst it's ever been. <laughs> um, and I didn't really realize that until we started talking about it. So I was overjoyed when I loaded up the TWAB on Thursday. <laughs> and got this preview. Yeah, and they, they're... They're right on top of it. So here's what's happening. When you're recovering an exotic, we will take into account all exotics you've found and weight them against exotics you have yet to acquire. This lowers the chance of receiving exotics you already own. Exotics that you do not yet own will be individually weighted much higher than duplicate exotics. When receiving duplicate exotics, you will be more likely to earn armor pieces as they have randomly rolled perks. And then finally, exotic quest weapons are being removed from the exotic engram loot pool. There you go. This seems great. Yes, it is. This Thank should you, definitely buddy. increase the chance for Guardians to pick up the new gear that we don't have, yes. which really needs to happen. Especially as a Titan dude, there's so many amazing Titan armor pieces oh, I want those out there. Bear right now. arms, man! <laughs> I'm telling you, I want, I, all I want the things. super powerful. Possibly, maybe someday getting nerfed. Who knows? Uh, One-eyed mask. Don't you have that? It's my, I it's never called? take it off, <laughs> dude. I haven't. I don't know that I. I we've done I've this. I've developed before, entire I, play styles around it. I have. I have gotten like three or four of the new weapons. Um, nice. Granted you know like queen breaker and stuff like that stuff yeah we've had in the past yeah. but still a new weapon for forsaken and, and mm -hmm. d2 but no i don't i don't maybe one i don't think i've gotten any armor i don't think i've gotten any armor um man that's hard dude and i mean i'm playing because the, the armor <laughs> especially it opens up the unique play styles that make mm -hmm. the new content just a different type of fun, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like One-Eyed Mask just opens up for Titan ways for you to be super aggressive. Like I I use it pretty much always in Gambit, and I have an entire like play style in Gambit. I want it so bad. Yeah, using like dude. an auto rifle and a shotgun, and I just go in like unafraid of anything. I mean, you kind of have to be a little <laughs> bit agile but it's all about chaining the uh the one-eyed man perks you know and you get low health and mm -hmm. you get that damage boost and the overshield so you don't get killed when you're in the middle of ads and you just tear it up man and i try to go in without it or on my warlock or something else like that and i just get destroyed because i'm forgetting oh yeah like i'm not gonna yeah. get this overshield yeah <laughs> I wanted for PvP off, so, so bad, dude. When I play on my other guys, I just I just sit back with a pulse and let everybody else pick up the modes. Mm -hmm. I mean, it'll be hard for me to put my synthoseps away because that uh, extra reach 
range that's, that's on good. my melee hits yeah. i'm so addicted to but uh i would put it away for that that well, you know the PvP. real i've learned last season the real important perk on syntheseps is doing increased damage while in your super when surrounded by enemies yeah and that's big for pve big that's time an too. overlooked perk it's yep. huge it's mm-hmm. a huge boost yep Being i've been using those face, in the melee titan yeah put a little melting point on a boss get out your shotgun and then just mm-hmm. yep it's, i've been uh, using those in the um haunted forest since i can't wear an exotic helmet i gotta wear my mask oh yeah yeah so I put on set the steps, <laughs> unless yeah. you're getting grenade launcher kills and then you can wear your wear your normal home yeah uh, but well, yeah dude um, yeah i think so i uh i think I, I gotta say like you you heard how excited i was when i got Cerberus plus one that one week so yeah it like it's it if if an exotic pops up in my play session tonight or something like i'm gonna be super pumped if it's not a duplicate i think like I think you're right. The it's important to differentiate. It's it's the drop rate. I think may be okay, maybe a little bit more often. But I love how exciting you get, excited you get now, and um, how cool yeah. it is to get one in that moment you have. It's, it's almost definitely like old school, you know. So if you if they can do this, implement this, and make it to where it's not like oh, I'm excited for a split second because I yeah. see yellow, yellowish gold, and then I realize it's a duplicate. <laughs> yeah, because you know? I, so, yeah. I have uh, I got this week. I had a, an engram drop from an enemy in the haunted forest. Which almost always when I see these, they're they're almost like green all the time Mm -hmm. because of the way their lighting is. So I'm like, wait, what color is that? Oh my God, it's exotic. And I got (laughs) Cerberus to drop. I was was flipped out. I was like yelling in my house like, oh my God, I'm going to wake the kids up. Like, I got Cerberus, (laughs) It's cool, man. It is really cool. It's a good gun. It's it's fun to play with. And just that moment, you know, it it definitely feels like it's back a little bit. Um, But uh, yeah. And then it was funny that any the, armor uh, four weeks in stinks. Last night, my buddy Five. was complaining about exotics. I mean, literally, he was he was saying something like, "I haven't gotten an exotic to drop in over a month." And as he finished his statement, he killed an ad in an exotic drop. <laughs> <laughs> I do he love like, that. Like yours happened. What? That's how mine. <laughs> I got one in the blind well just from a random yellow bar. And I do like that that's possible. I, I have noticed too, you get legendaries just even in the haunted forest, just, just so randomly from you random. Legendaries just quite little, a bit from uh, little yellow ads. bars. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I, I do like that, man. I, I like that. Um, it's, it's something it seems I think be... way back in the day we didn't. It's either in certain zones or it's certain only certain enemies that seem like they're part of the expansion because when I'm Yeah, like the wanted enemies. Yeah, when I'm in the Dreaming City or I'm in the Tangled Shore, when I'm killing majors and powerful enemies, they almost are always dropping a purple engram. Mm -hmm. But when I go into older patrol areas that's not usually the case. So right. I feel like they may have some different drop, you know, chances on the newer enemy types or something. I don't know. Right. That might yeah. just be in my head, but. Well, Hey, I'll take it. Um, yeah, I, I definitely feel like legendaries drop pretty often as well. So I always like I'm being able to drop from yeah. any random ad at any point. For yeah. sure. So, well, again, a delicate a, balance in every aspect of the game. <laughs> yeah, this is a great <laughs> improvement um, to exotics, and I'm looking forward to this, getting a chance to pick up some of the other stuff I don't have. You know, I'd like to see the, I hear the, the new sword is really good. Um, I know I want that. What else don't I have? I feel like there's a the new sword. Oh, isn't there a... Uh, wait, sorry. That might be PlayStation exclusive. There's a new Trace <laughs> rifle, right? Yeah, the new Trace uh, rifle, the Void one is is yeah, PlayStation I've exclusive. Heard, but, I've heard cool things. But yeah, and then some of the armors, you know, I'd like Antius Wards, and I'd like some of the Warlock and Hunter stuff that's new that's mm-hmm. that's pretty cool, so... You're still main in a Titan, right? Yes. Yeah. Most of the time, but I, I had to dial <laughs> back a little bit because I got my Hunter uh, finally through the campaign... And I have to do like one last step to get him into the Dreaming City, but I did get his power up and I got a few challenges done. So he's he's hovering around like 580 once I put my powerful guns on. 
So I'm, I'm trying to get him just a, a set of decent legendary gear so I can take him into the raid because I want another mm-hmm. chance at 1,000 voices. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. It's all about that gun right now. Mm-hmm. So, all right. Um, enhancement cores. Oh, Masterwork yes. cores will be renamed Enhancement Cores because that's not a mouthful. <laughs> More sources will award enhancement cores. They will be added to scrapper bounties in six of the spiders' weekly bounties. Enhancement cores will be more visible in the loot feed. So I already talked about a few weeks ago how I thought this this was silly, this renaming, but Yeah, we talked about this. The yeah. new name seems even sillier. Um yeah. but it is what it is. At least we'll be able to get more of them. Right. Yeah, that's the important thing. I mean, and we we talked. I mean, master masterwork cores will no longer be a thing, right? They'll all be called enhancement yes. cores. Yeah. See, and that's where when we talked about this, that was my original thing. Is like, I I mean, I guess when you continue to talk about it, maybe not. But uh, you're kind of just throwing confusion on the other side now. Now I'm going to use enhancement cores to make my weapon a masterwork. But right. when you get down to the bottom of it, I guess it is just a material, and you're just masterworking your weapon. So it right. it kind of makes sense, you know. I missed thinking about that piece of it. Um, but yeah, the, the the most important thing is there's more direct paths to get these things. Um, I, of course, could not help but think about, I think I even tweeted out, um, I want to see mod components get this love. Uh, yeah. I know, man, it's crazy. We said that poll last week was like, which are you having a harder time finding masterwork cores or yeah. uh, mod components? And it was like 48% to 52 and it was masterwork cores, but I'm like, wow, I can't believe it was that close. I'm not kidding, man. Like, I don't know how I'm playing this game. I'm playing it pretty regularly. I get like one mod component every two weeks. Oh, it's rare. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, you don't, and I'm not, I'm much. not doing, I know there's like farming methods and things you can do. Um, I even know there's a new thing inside of the collections that you can do. That's not as efficient as the previous one with the Braytech scout rifle. But, um, I just, I don't get them, man. Like I, and this is when you get back to that horizontal progression and, and the timing being right in a season. And I'm definitely at that point, um, at least I mean, with my PVP loadouts where I'm trying to maximize this how? stuff and I can't buy Mods, How are you know? these not a drop in gunsmith packages? Something, yeah. It's very. It seems like, especially with these, maybe more so than cores. Um, it's uh, you know just a subtle tweak here or there, just to throw them more oftenly dropped in our resets. Um, yeah. Now, I don't. I definitely don't want this to be confused with. I don't want to be able to buy mods left and right blindly, and not ever run out of uh, mods. Be able components. to do it. Period. Like, yeah, I love that you do. I love that I have to think about what weapon I want to put it in because I may not have another one for a little while. But I would definitely like to buy a mod more often than like once every three or four weeks. <laughs> yeah. So maybe I just need to go do some some farming. I still think that's not the solution, though. I think we can agree like like cores. There needs to be a more direct way to to get these and and. Wrapping back around to Cool Guy, now now that I'm remembering his video, I want to go watch it again, but uh, I just remember thinking, wow, these are some great ideas. Um, he did intertwine that into the gunsmith, you know, bounties, um, things like that, where uh, you could get so many mod components a week if you wanted to put in the time with the gunsmith. Um, so, man, uh, wrapping it back around to what you said about the gunsmith, what a way to make him a little more interesting, right? Yeah. So... Sorry, that's my that's my mod component tangent. I will try not to do this again, guys, until they maybe we, apply some sort. We gotta of do it at least again. once a week until they show up and do something. You know. <laughs> oh, okay. Give them Sorry. some mod components. <laughs> um, okay, exotic tuning improvements to two weapons uh, that have definitely been launched with a little bit of a a dud. I guess you could say Wish Ender <laughs> and Malfeasance are two oh, weapons that are difficult to get. Um, but a little underwhelming in the field. So Wish Ender is receiving an increase to base damage and fixing an issue where the broadhead perk would not properly activate under certain circumstances, which would result in a loss of damage. So that should help Wish Ender at least be more effective out in the yes. field. I was so hopeful for Wish Ender too, man. It's primary, <laughs> kinetic, um, 
bow yeah. seeing through walls. I still right. don't have it. I'm hoping to get it here soon, but man, I hope this makes it a it's little a bit more It's a beautiful weapon. It's yeah. one of the best all that ornament too. weapons mm-hmm. in the game. And the ornament, yeah, I just got the ornament uh, yesterday to drop from an Ingram. It also was on sale this week, but uh, it's it's so great. And it, cha- it even changes the color of the arrow bolt and head. Oh, I love cool. it. Nice. So so pretty. Yeah. Um, Arsenal, hopefully soon. Next up, if you're lucky enough to meet a meatball, you might have malfeasance. <laughs> I do not. It is a source of much ire to me. Uh, it You will receive an increase to explosive shadow detonation damage. That's the explosion that you receive when you put five rounds into a target. And an increase in damage against Taken and Invaders. So I think this could make this weapon, which is a very niche weapon, at mm-hmm. least more effective in those circumstances. Yeah. Looking forward yep. to one day getting my well. hands on it. <laughs> Me too. I can't. I just want the gun, man. <laughs> yeah. They, uh, it's not in the TWAB, right? The, I don't remember if we mentioned this before, but they tweeted out again. Um, it's in that here. The, the, is it in here? The spawn yeah, rate is about the, to come out. Oh, okay. Yeah. There you go. There we'll you get go. to it. We'll get to it. Oh, man. Most this excited about this. <laughs> um, trace rifles will now spawn with 50 ammo in the crucible. They will also benefit from the following armor perks. Uh, auto, li- auto rifle loader, unflinching auto rifle aim, auto rifle targeting, precision weapon targeting, and auto rifle dexterity. Weird. So, right yeah, I, I think don't, precision I th- might be a typo, but I don't know. I, I don't I, think it uh, is. You think so? I, I kind of heard some rumblings in the community that maybe it was a typo because it really does. It's the only one that doesn't fit. You wouldn't think it would be a it typo. It does but fit, it's, it's though, weird. because... It is a single, it's not a Very true. spray Very of true. bullets. Yeah, I guess it doesn't fit in the auto rifle theme, but for a, a it trace rifle, it does. But it right. does, right? So it's yeah. in a weird yeah, place. That's what you're yeah, so you, I, yeah, I bet you're right. I bet it's not. It's it's still weird. Uh, don't because you infuse trace perks. rifles with autos as well? You always have. Isn't that right? Um, Say that back again? in the day when. Back in the day when we had the stipulation where it had to be of the same weapon type, yeah, didn't trace yeah. rifles have to be infused? It's with considered autos? an auto rifle archetype. Yeah, okay. So and I think that's. This, I think the problem this, is when they launched all these perks sense. is that it it wasn't applying any perks to it. Yeah, and then there's several perks like precision weapon targeting that can offer that perk to several different weapons, mm-hmm. and so. I think that's kind of where they decided to fit that one in because, you know, you're going for with especially with trace rifles, you're typically going for precision shots. It's just a beam yeah. instead of a spray of bullets. It does kind of mess. I feel like it might mess with my head a little bit if I did use these a lot. I'd be like, wait, hold on, <laughs> wait, which what perks perk am I looking for? Oh, that's right, auto them? rifle. <laughs> just remember, we used to have to infuse them. Just gotta read those tool rifles. tips. <laughs> Read the two tips. Okay. Now, as we were talking about infamy, I'm so excited. Yeah, this I almost jumped jumped ahead. Sorry, dude. I, this is That was probably the thing that you said. But this is also something about. that we were talking about with Iron Banner last week. Me and my buds mm-hmm. were like, when do we get double infamy? Yep. And this I week, wondered if they were going to do it. I assumed probably so at some point. Yeah, I figured we would. Uh, double infamy... From bounties, wins, and losses from October 30th to November 2nd, triple infamy wow. from November 2nd to, and this actually was, I think, said to be a typo. I think it's actually through November 5th, hmm. but I'm not sure. I saw one dev tweet these out. It was through the 6th at 10 a.m., and then another say um, clarification through November 5th. Something like that. Basically, the whole week, you'll get extra infamy. Just keep that in mind, okay? <laughs> yes, I'm most excited for that, for um, uh, more drops for some of those, in particular, trust and buy guns. Yeah, I'd the love weapons, to see some more for sure. Drops. Yeah. Well, just, you know, every time that you move rank to up, a new right? rank, you'll yep. get uh, an item to drop. And so this is going to be a great chance if you need to farm that gear. Mm-hmm. So yep. I still haven't gotten a single bygones to drop. I bought the vendor one, which luckily is amazing. And I've only gotten one 
trust to drop in my gambit play. I don't, I don't Luckily, get a lot of bygone drops. Roll, so. I, I might yeah, have like two one. or three. Mm-hmm. I've gotten a ton of distant relations, that scout rifle. I, yep, is. me too. Yep. yep, I've got a bunch of those. I've got a bunch of the, uh, man, what's the rocket launcher? I can't even remember now. Yeah, I've gotten several of those as well. I can't yeah. remember the name. It seems like mm-hmm. some of them are weighted more than others. But trust yeah. seems to drop quite a bit because I've gotten a number of trusts. A bunch of my buddies get trust drops yeah, all the time. Yeah, that's what I've heard, man. I've gotten one, dude. But again, I'm not going to complain because the roll I got is pretty solid for PvP. So yeah. I, got, I got lucky RNG on my first drop, so. Well, and to me, the biggest part of this news is with the update that we're getting uh, this Tuesday, the Ascendant Primeval Servitor spawn rates will increase. And they clarify that even though it's not a full curse week, um, that you will, I, I think this was, I was reading on Twitter, even though this reset won't be a full curse week. You're going to see them meatball more than you would during a full curse week because so of the increase. Yep. And so this is going to be a great week to get in there and try to that farm that guy. That was such a guy. good way to relay to us how much of an increase it's going to be. <laughs> right, right. It all, so, that's all, that all hits home with us. We, okay, we get it. It's going to be higher. <laughs> so I've got my team and we all, well, at least some of us, three of us have decided like, this reset coming up, we're this we're all going for dredging. We're gonna finish Good. our resets. I gotta get malfeasance. We all gotta get the extra cosmetic items to drop. You gotta have the ship sparrow and um ghost to get dredging. The ghost you get from three resets. Mm-hmm. So we're gonna have to get the meatball a bunch of times to get those extra two items now because yeah. of the way they've changed it. But we're just going to play our hearts out in Gambit. And uh, <laughs> I'm going to get that dad come malfeasance quest to drop. Do it. Determined. Do it. It's all I'm so. doing next Hopefully. week. Um, yeah. Well, ha- well, you know, we'll have that uh, murder well, mystery a little thing, popping but, up. You know, but, uh, that's a side that. <laughs> quest for me, okay? It's a distraction <laughs> next week. I am determined to get this meatball and destroy him. I can't wait. I'm so excited. So, gambit time. Uh, this is an interesting uh, addition to the game here. The refer a friend is returning. So, yes. I think it was, was it the round after the Taken King that we saw this the first time? Mm, I can't remember for sure. I definitely took part in it. Um, it was either, but maybe it was before that. Maybe it was year one. I think it they, they've done before, this a couple yeah. times. I feel like it f- feels like it was a long time ago. Yeah. Um, so refer a friend program is returning. Um, basically, you send a link to new players and it links you up with them and you go through a quest where you do certain things in the game. Um, you know, in the past, it had been like, you know, do a strike, then do a nightfall, then do this, do that. And you go through these things together and then you would earn uh, special cosmetic gear like a ship and there was a uh, an emote and just different stuff. So as you complete steps through this quest now, you'll get, uh, they show off a ship, um, a really cool looking sniper. That It almost, this looks like the Borealis, doesn't it? Yeah, I think so. Uh, is it uh, is it an actual sniper? Or is it just a uh, ornament? Is it uh, you know, I don't know. Maybe it is an ornament. I think it might be an ornament. I, Maybe I, I just, just looked at it that and from thought. I, yeah, that's what I thought. I thought. I thought. No, I thought. Uh, I just immediately thought it was borealis with the. Well, ornament it's got like a cool prismatic shifting, like effect on it that looks awesome. Yeah, it looks really cool. And then uh, there is a emblem. And then as well, if you have multiple friends to refer, there is a special sparrow with the same color scheme that's really cool. So if you want to take advantage of this, a uh, veteran player is someone who owns Destiny 2 Forsaken already. A new player is someone who has who does not own Destiny 2 Forsaken or has not owned it for or has owned it for less than seven days. Um, once you've owned it for longer than seven days, they're no longer eligible to be referred. And 
as well. Those who purchase Forsaken between October 16th and 30th will qualify as a new player and will be eligible for referral up to November 7th. So mm-hmm. if you have any buds that have been on the edge or maybe haven't bought or logged into Destiny Forsaken, this is a good time to do it. My my concern is uh, there's nobody left to refer at this point. <laughs> I know that's my thought too. I remember thinking that with the first go around and then there were some, and I'm sure there's still there some that are still holding on, but man, yeah, many of my friends just came back with the Hyper Forsaken and, and you know, all the good, good things that looked like was coming. I, so I think if I remember what me and some friends did in the past was we just jumped in um our different communities and on reddit yeah put up posts and different things just saying hey you know looking for a new guardian to you know link up for the referral i mean you're not truly referring somebody but if you want the stuff you don't have anybody to refer try to get on you know in your community or uh on reddit or twitter or different places and just say hey you know looking for a new guardian hit me up and, yeah. uh, cause they get stuff too, you know, they get the same stuff. And so most, and you're, they're usually doing things that are going to benefit them anyways, as part of the quest as a new player. Yeah. Reminds me of the periodic, uh, mailings we'll get from dish network. Refer a friend, you get $50 credit on your account. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I feel like people would be as interested or more if they offered some silver you know yeah very much so. something yeah just saying just saying bungie all right over in destiny to play. player support there will be some maintenance with no downtime on the 30th beginning at 8 a.m scheduling to conclude at 10 a.m pacific um destiny companion features will be down during that time and you'll have to install an update. There's some known issues for Destiny Forsaken. Um, go check those out if you are having any weird problems. You can go read those. Movies of the week. Um, here's a cool one with people soloing Shattered Throne. Mm-hmm. I've had some people I know attempting and seeing different people. This is a tough triumph to get. And then a uh, Luna's Howl versus Callus video. <laughs> <laughs> I actually haven't watched that. I yet. feel like this is just a thing now. Like if there's a good, strong weapon or a cool weapon, like all right, let's go try to kill it with transit. six of these and kill Callus <laughs> now. Like that's the gold standard. This That's week, I don't you know do. if you saw Glad and Clan Redeem, they killed Val Ka'ur in the uh, Spire of Stars with only melees. Oh, really? No, I didn't yep, see that. Two phases. No. Wow. today. That's fun times, though, when, when that stuff... That seems like old days, right? Yeah, um, just going in and doing silly stuff. Kill, kill Crota with just no lane beyonds. Yeah. Or... <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Finally, uh, Cosmo and Dimji uh, were at TwitchCon this weekend. If you're out there uh, hanging out, talking to people, meeting people, good for them. Hope they had a great yeah. time. Hope you had a great time if you're at TwitchCon. Looks like events. there's some cool stuff. Um, in other news, if you keep up with the wishes in the last wish raid, you know that wish 10 and wish 15 have proved elusive. Mm-hmm. Now over in uh, raid secrets and destiny, the game subreddits, there was an individual that was able to use some data from the game to determine what wish 10's uh, texture file was. So they were able to basically data mine what the coordinates for the, like what the wish uh, key was. Right. And then were able to figure out where the texture was located in the game roundabout. And yeah, because of the other files that were also. Yeah. So, yeah. But he said, because I like the spirit of this idea is that you're supposed to find it in the game, I'm not going to tell you 
where it is, but I'll give you a hint. (laughs) So he allowed, you know, basically the community to kind of narrow it down a little bit and they were able to finally find where this wish plate was. It was, it was located in the, uh, the dreaming city gambit map. Mm -hmm. Which now completely makes sense to me. Cause when I heard all this going down, I'm like, Oh, which, Dang, which Gambit map would it be on? Then there was speculation that you had to, maybe you had to be an invader to see it. And then, right. But if you really think about it for a second, it makes sense that it would be the Dreaming City map. Well, and it was <laughs> kind of tricky where it was and how you see it because apparently it's on like an island in the distance or something that you have to l- scope in to see. And there's mm-hmm. a crystal in front of it unless you're on the third round. And oh, on the wow. third round, it becomes unobscured. And you can see the whole thing. Like, oh, that's so tricky, man. Yeah. That's, so Wish yeah. 10 has been found. You can uh, you can look online and and look it up now if you want to put it in. It's I'm not going to spoil what it is. You'll probably take a guess, but it's pretty cool. I haven't heard it yet. I want to I want to go try it out definitely and go. Yeah, same. I've just heard. Go see what it audio, is. Audio yeah. files of it. Man. So that's exciting. So Me one too. wish remains. Wish 15. Who knows what it's going to be? We'll find out. Ooh. can't wait can't wait i won't be long yep that's all the major news i'm aware of in destiny this week yeah nothing too crazy this week um just as soon as we think we don't have much to talk about though we can always manage to uh talk about something <laughs> there's uh we find something to talk about in this game as much as we play oh yeah always yep always well then um now that the news is over, let me ask you, Arrow Knight, how was your reset? Dude, my reset's been great, man. I um, I always have this thing with Destiny. Um, I used to play, I thought about it a couple times this week, I used to play a lot of different games, um, buy so many games this time of year, and just want to play them all. And while I still want to do that, I don't know what it is about Destiny, man, but it just it just hits hits right on the mark for me i had i I mean i have this moment regularly i have awesome play sessions good times and have a a blast with destiny but i'm playing it this week and i'm like man i just i had those moments again where i'm sitting at work or something and i'm like i just want to play some more i don't know if it's because i had like specific things i knew i wanted to get done or this or that but um i'm sure many guardians can relate but you know for me this week um i did finally i did jump back into comp a bit I think I've already reported to the listeners that I uh, I hit Fabled, so now I'm just kind of grinding away at that uh, um, quest line to get my Luna, and maybe at some point not forgotten, but at least Luna. Um, but it's gotten a little bit more sweaty, you know, because some have advised maybe to do the quest steps before you hit Fabled, and others are like, they want to get the stress of Fabled off their shoulders and then just kind of grind away at the quest, so... I did the uh, the fabled part first, so I, I seem to be running into a little bit more sweaty lobbies maybe uh, than I would have pre-fabled, um, but still having a good time, not trying to take it too, too serious. Um, but with that, you know, I did, uh, this, this reset was when I decided I was going to do more Festival of the Lost stuff, I focused on Iron Banner. When it was up last week, made sure I got those uh, those guns that he was selling. Um, they were pretty nicely rolled. So I went in and spent more time with the Haunted Forest, dude. Um, still enjoying it. Uh, I hit. I did hit, what is it? Uh, I always forget what the name of the levels are. It's something with a B. It's not Bank. It's not, it's not Waves. What is it? Do you remember what they're called? The level of... Like the each each tier or level deeper you get into the Festival of the Lost uh, Haunted Forest. It's called. Oh. I can't. I always forget when recording. I remember. I remember later on. Anyways, it's something. It's a B word. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> anyways, I made it to level seven, which is when you get your emblem and then it tracks. You know how far you've made it. But is there? Am I missing something? I don't think there is. Right? There's. There's other than just completing your triumphs. You don't get anything for going any deeper into the haunted forest no right? i mean you get okay. more souls at the yeah, end right. the further you get oh you mean i got you when you're done you open that chest yeah. you get more souls yeah okay but it's um, not like compounding or anything i mean it, right it almost seems like every wave is like one more soul that, mm-hmm. that might be you know pretty much what it is so yeah it's not a huge return on getting further you know right yeah i feel like 
you know, we talked about this last week. For a live event, this is this has been a pretty spectacular event. I will say it does seem like maybe a an opportunity was missed there. Maybe just to throw something at like a crazy hard level. Now, granted, you always there have could that still be something there. Yeah, true, know? very true. I maybe think we've got one more week. I think right now the record is seventeen. By right, clan yeah. redeem. I think so, yeah. Which and is I, okay, I ridiculous. won't say an opportunity missed. We still, I can't say that yet when we've got a week left in festival. True. But I, it would be neat if there was yeah. something else there. Yeah. Um, I am still enjoying the haunted forest. I, I hope this was like a hey, let's see what they think about this. Um, we've we've done something different with the infinite forest. Maybe something more like what they thought the infinite forest would be, and maybe we see a little bit more iteration on this. I know. Um, Spoiler alert, it's not 100% confirmed, obviously, but um, part of some of that Black Armory stuff is that there's going to be uh, some sort of horde mode in there where it's more rewarding the further you make it. Now, that could just be another Court of Oryx, or it could be, you know, just Blind Well, these iterations that we've gotten over the years. Um, but I'm hopeful that maybe they're learning, um, taking this feedback. Obviously, they're taking the feedback yeah. from the Haunted Forest and how we're enjoying it, and maybe one day we'll get that that horde mode that I've always dreamed we would get. Um, this is a step closer for sure. Yeah. I, and the infinite forest just seems, seems like the place, right? Yeah. Um, so anyways, you know, I, I'm again, I'm still enjoying festival. I think it's, uh, it's been a pretty darn good event, um, for a live event. And, uh, I did have to prioritize. I missed my, uh, I did like 11 of 15 of the, bounties last week i meant to to get done with all 15 so i missed those 40 fragmented souls oh man you need those um, yeah yeah so i'm i'm 100 making sure that i get that bounty done this week and the yeah. next week and i've i've had to prioritize realistically which masks i can get because i want i definitely want the auto rifle um and one for the power increase and just to add it to my collection. So yeah. it's looking like maybe I'll be able to get one or two masks depending on how much I want to grind Haunted Forest. And I think I might just settle with Shacks. <laughs> I kind <laughs> of, at, at first I, yeah, I wanted like three or four of them. And then I, you know how it goes. It's like cleaning out your vault. I sat down and just kind of looked at them and I'm like, okay, if I had to pick one or two, I went and looked at them, and Shax is this cool dude. Plus, I'm just kind of a PvP guardian a lot of times, so um, I kind of want, definitely want to try and get Shax's mask. Yeah. Um, but other than that, dude, I'm enjoying it. I'll tell you, this week has been, um, if you're in tune, which you probably are if you're listening to this show, there is definitely some uh, farming methods about in the game the last reset or two. One being, uh, I can't I think we recorded before we did this last week, but uh, Mindbender's Ambition, the shotgun in the, yeah. is it the hollow layer? Yeah, the hollow layer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that, that strike, that Nightfall strike has been an option for the last two resets. And uh, you can go in there and, uh, you know. Get a little just, cheesy. Oh, yeah, this always feels like uh, D1, man. You can uh, go in there and basically after you kill the Nightfall boss, if you kill yourself right as the chest opens, it will respawn you back at the beginning of the boss fight, and you can just farm the boss. Yeah, and yeah, we did that for probably like these are things, dude. I just this is this is what Destiny's all about. I don't know what it is about grinding loot like this, but it's it obviously takes you back to the grasp days, and it's just fun, dude. Like. Even if you have to run the whole strike, that's cool and, and everything too. But when these things pop up and you can farm the boss like this, and when you have random rolls in the game, you still don't like it takes a lot of time to get that roll you want. Yeah. So it's not like, you know, you just get it in 30 minutes and you're done and you know, whatever. We did this for probably like an hour or so. It, it and reminds I, me of Omnigol. Yes, Omnigol. That, that was grasp. that was grasp, right? Yeah. yeah. Yep. Yep. It's just fun, man. Like, I don't know what it is about it, but it's fun to grind with your friends. You're doing the same thing over and over again in this isolated boss room, but it's fun. Like, the excitement of seeing which, if you got your roll. Now, I know you could just run the whole strike. Uh, again, I don't, I guess it's just part of the Destiny experience when this stuff comes about, but uh, we had a good time. I got... Uh, um, the curated role among other roles on that Mindbender's Ambition. Oh, nice. So as a PvP player, I am like, yeah, I was pretty excited Dude, about I, that. Dude, I love how 
weapons have curated roles in the game. And I, I'm not oh, even yeah. sure yeah. the scope of how many it encompasses because <clears throat> we d- found out initially they're definitely in the raid. And then mm-hmm. come to find out there's curated roles on the Dreaming City stuff. There's curated roles on the uh, Gambit stuff. And then now it seems there's some on the Nightfall stuff. I mean, is Maybe there's some on every new gun in the game. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's very cool, too. And, and it, even in its current form, it adds so much to the game. And uh, I think um, it could be even iterated on even more. Yeah. They um, need a they need areas. a term. Like, they, there needs to be an official term for these, though. Mm-hmm. You know, like, a, I don't know, a mega legendary or something. I don't know. Yeah, like, something there needs like to be a super word for epic. It. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, enhance uh, and enhance yeah. legendary or something, you know, yeah. that would make it seem yeah. kind of cool. Just that kind of that level between a raw drop and then, and you know, the perfect role. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, man, I have a funny story too. We were doing this just, I, this is, this is one thing I love how Bungie just embraces this stuff. You know, they, they may patch it at some point, but they don't just go do it. Like if it's in there, just go have your fun and do it, you know? And it's yeah. like, while you can my funny story is while we were doing this again it was probably just for like an hour or two we just wanted to go in and see what we could get we had a slot open um and uh um cosmo joined our fire team (laughs) and i'm like i'm sitting there like oh wait yep okay cosmo just joined he joins up and he's like what are you guys doing? <laughs> and I'm like, I'm like, oh, you know, this maybe this one thing that's going on in the Nightfall Strike this week. Um, so it's like, uh, okay, th- this is this is kind of funny. But he actually needed to do the Nightfall, which we also needed to do. So we just we just ended up doing the Nightfall um, to complete it. You know, for the I actually let one of my friends sub in um, to to finish it. But uh, man, I don't know. I just I like. I like what this does for the community when it happens and I like the way they kind of just embrace it. And at some point, you know, we'll probably patch it out. Um, but it just, it, I don't know. It's, it's, it's part of the destiny experience and it creates that hype. Um, to, uh, again, especially with random rolls back. And, uh, it's been a farming week for me, dude, because Mercules, I'm sure you probably saw, he released, um, like a, a major in-depth shotgun, um, analysis of his own, and um, now the hunt is on for like a couple particular shotguns. Um, shout out to our buddy Fallout. He's he's been all over shotgun stats for a while and kind of told us what to get. Among I'm sure maybe some other content creators out there that maybe we just aren't watching. But uh, apparently, uh, one of the main shotguns you want is the uh, Dust Rock Blues, which like randomly drops in lost sectors on Mars and this or that. So. I've spent some time farming some lost sectors on Mars and got a pretty solid roll on one of those shotties. Um, got, uh, apparently the main thing is, is these guys can reliably kill at nine meters. That's the magical distance in PVP. And, um, Holy cow, man, that's, yes, that's almost 30 feet. And you want, um, you want like, specific perks and you want uh obviously you want specific perks and there's certain things that maybe you don't realize with shotgun perks that do certain things and as fallout has told us for a long time now you want impact uh is the most important and then you want pellet spread to be tight that's the second most important and then you want range um used to we thought range was pretty high up there but range is third on the list with these these items and this shotgun and another, I forget what the other one is called, maybe the Retold Tail, I can't remember for sure. Um, they meet that criteria. So I got one to drop, dude, with full choke, which is 100% what you want on a shotgun for PvP because it tightens the pellet spread. And then uh, I got full auto on it, which is another important uh, perk. And then I got slide shot, which is actually pretty solid if you can get used to sliding because it increases that range. Um, but, uh, there's a couple different other perks you can get in that column too, that are pretty solid. So farm for that a bit, man. And I got a pretty decent roll. And then here's the last one for this week. I got a Duke, which is a 110 hand cannon, not my favorite in PVP because they fire so slow. I love the one eighties, the opposite end of the spectrum, but, um, this thing has kill clip on it 
And I learned this week that a Duke with Kill Clip can actually two tap, which is then a faster TTK than the Luna or the non Not Forgotten. Mm. So I may learn to like one tens in PvP. Um, you can I get that I just, Kill Clip roll. Good, but you, oh, d- yes. You need, yep. I, I got a reload masterwork on it. Yeah. Um, you need but reload not, perks on the Duke. Amazing. Yeah, my my other perk was triple tap, so not ideal for PvP, but yeah. um, I'll take that kill clip. So I haven't, I just actually got it today. So um, I want to, I'll I'll maybe report next week. I want to take it into PvP. Um, a Dirt fan member gave me a nice little uh, good tip. I didn't even think about it. I haven't had the bows out in so long trying to get my uh, quest done for comp. Um, I've always, I was always looking for a hand cannon or something to clean up my bow kills. Man, you talk about that thing. Crit with a bow, clean up with a kill clip Duke, and yeah. then then you've got kill clip procked after that and just go on a tear, right? I've got an outlaw um, rampage. but Oh, nice. That's pretty solid. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. I mean, the only thing, the rampage in PvP, you know, you feel like you've yeah, got that yeah. time factor, it's but it's still, good. that's what's on my uh, trust, man. And, yeah. and if you can get a few guardians in a row dude it it definitely mm-hmm. still does some work yeah so anyways dude that's been my reset it turned into a uh squeezing in some festival of the lost and um apparently farming for everything that became extremely popular the last <laughs> reset <laughs> so what about you dude oh my How's goodness what about you I f- I, every reset i'm like what haven't i done this week all kinds of silliness this week man um thinking back Let's see. Haunted Forest, first of all. Uh, You know, last week when we talked, I hadn't played a lot yet Mm -hmm. because we were doing other stuff earlier in the week. But since then, I want to say I've played almost every night in the past six or seven days. I've got two of my buddies that we all have been enjoying it. We have been trying to climb the... uh, the rounds or whatever you want to call them, the instances. And we've made it to 10 so far. Uh, we just pulled that off, completed it uh, for the first time last night. So now we're shooting nice. for 11, trying Very to get cool. up to 11. And, you know, at the same time, doing the bounties and trying to get enough. I don't think uh, I've even been in there with my actual fire team. I've yeah. just ran with blueberries. It's, it's, you know, it's not bad with, uh, with randoms. Like, you can do decent. Um, but with a team like coordinating your weapons and your your classes and doing things a certain way you can get a lot further and you know we actually i mean af- it seems like once you kind of get things down like you get your ideal loadout everybody's builds are kind of c- complementing each other and they do we all do certain things you know that optimize stuff you know we kind of fought to get to 10 and then tonight Earlier tonight, we were just playing casually and made it to 10, like not Mm -hmm. sweating, you know? So kind of once you get things down with a fire team, you can get further and further and it's not as much work, it seems. (laughs) But but we're really, I mean, to play it that much, it, it, it's a lot of fun um, because it just, it's just the right kind of activity where you're going through waves of ads and you're kind of chaining supers and you're dealing with just enough difficulty and you know kind of speed running at the same time Mm -hmm. and just that loop of wave after wave like going in killing the boss start over yeah and how far can you get um is really fun now could i play this you know ad infinitum no but it's pretty fun for the couple weeks that we have it and uh Mm -hmm. i think that I should be able to get all the triumphs and all the masks and stuff unlocked. I got the horror story. Um, nice. Now yeah. origin story was probably like my favorite auto rifle of destiny one up to, or destiny two up till probably war mind. That was my baby. So horror story is, you know, basically an origin story with, um, you know, a cool perk set in, Masterwork mm-hmm. for yeah, you. Yeah, I'm looking at forward to that rampage. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So it's a good gun. Um, you know, if you can get it, I would get it. Especially if you are not at max power, that 600 drop is, you know, worth yeah, it, the grind. It'll, 
Yeah, and it'll, I mean, obviously that will benefit you moving forward too, right? You got that thing yeah, on yeah. your account. Because you're not going to uh, get 600 weapons until you cross like 596. Mm-hmm. So getting that now, if you're not up to that point, is absolutely worth the grind. Yeah. Um, definitely going to make it easier for you to power up. So I think it's a good, it's not, it's not, it, it seems like it is, but it's not that hard to get to 120. It's really not. Mm-hmm. You just do, you know, one weekly and then go in, like, run a few nights, you know, of an hour or two of the Haunted Forest. Like, you'll be there. Just don't yeah. waste it all on masks. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Don't. I haven't bought a single mask. I'm, the horror yeah. story is the primary focus. And then, yeah. So I'm really enjoying the event. It's really cool. It's fun. And, um, I think that they have a lot of potential for this mode if they wanted to do something else with it or uh, just to take their lessons from mm-hmm. what people have liked and not liked. Uh, I just I have this tinfoil hat theory that there's a way to kill that dang invincible oh, nightmare yeah. dude, man. Like You would think so, right? There's got to be a way, man. You can't put him in there and there's just no way to kill him. That Maybe something comes with the patch on the 30th. Maybe. Um, I'm just imagining like you get to the right wave or you get a random wave and he's there and you can kill him with some kind of cool you mechanic, don't you know? It. Yeah. <laughs> it's gotta be a way. You can't tell me I can't kill that son of a gun. It's killed me too many times. That's a good point. That's a good point. Um so yeah, Haunted Force has been pretty pretty cool, pretty fun, man. Um we got got into the raid early in the week. We've actually gotten it down to where we, we did two runs in one night. Oh yeah. wow! Nice. Man. Another one of my buds got a uh, thousand voices. I'm super jealous. I need to take a break from this sweaty comp and just go do the raid. Go do it, man! Jump it's in the really raid. fun. It's really <laughs> cool. Nights. Um, what else have I done? I, so I was telling you before the show, I'm steadily working and chipping away at uh, various titles, and mm-hmm. one of those is Wayfarer. You know, so I'm making sure I do the right things each week for the past several weeks. A um, couple things I missed early on that I could have gotten, so I'm gonna have to wait till flashpoints come back. But um, I'm not far from maybe three of them. Um, I think sometime in November I can knock out two or maybe three different titles. So I'm excited about that. That's something I've always enjoyed in Destiny is like building up your your score. Um, mm-hmm and doing that stuff. And these titles are, are really fun things. So I'll, I'll have those show off. So I kind of work on that a little bit. Um, and, Oh, I did some EP farming a couple different times. Oh yeah. I managed yep. to finally Me get too. the sniper. And, uh, I got the SMG just the other night. I went in and, uh, I was like, Hey guys, let's do some EP real quick. They're like, oh, all right, I guess. I kind of need to get this gun, whatever. So we get in there (laughs) and we put up a post to grab some extra people and we got some extra people in there. And, uh, we got on maybe like the fourth boss kill and it was the craziest thing. It dropped a weapon for four of us all in the same kill. And it was the exact weapon everybody needed. So oh, wow. I got the Different smig. Different weapons. Wow. Somebody else got the smig. Somebody got the sniper. So I don't remember That's what. Cool. The it was crazy. Like I was just watching the feed. I'm like, oh my god, what happened? And then we felt so bad because this this one girl that had joined with us, who had been trying to farm the shotgun for forever, she didn't get anything. Oh. We we're like, we're so sorry. So we we all like <laughs> ran some more rounds with her, you know, trying to help, and she still didn't get it. I mean. It's punishing, Dang. but I couldn't believe how many people got a weapon all in the same round. It was nuts. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that's, so it's crazy. I have all the uh, EP weapons now, but one of the uh, requirements for the Wayfarer title is that you have to have all of the weapons from uh, Osiris and Warmind. And the problem with that is that you have to have all the Braytech legendaries, mm-hmm. and those are pretty notoriously hard to get because of RNG. I still don't have the auto rifle, which was back in the static roll days was a pretty solid auto rifle. Um, yeah. For Mana Bray. 
So mm-hmm. there's several of those I have to get. One of them is the Osprey rocket launcher, which can only drop from a certain nightfall. Um, and that hasn't popped up for a while. So whenever that shows up, I got to farm that. And mm-hmm. then I've got to try to get Braytech weapons. Um, so got my work cut out for me there. Some grinding to do, but um, yeah, that's the plans. Very cool. Dude, I've just been keeping my eye on the my Crucible <laughs> title, which is going to take yeah. me several seasons. Yeah, I don't know if um, I'll be able to get that one, man, because... I'm at five of ten already, but as well, as we've talked, one of them is uh, pretty difficult. Um, so yeah, we'll see. <laughs> the, I mean, the biggest one that just still blows me away is um, to achieve legendary three three in three seasons. Mm-hmm. One season would be a tall, tall order for me. But goodness, I mean, Let that's going to be. I think the Crucible um, title may be ending up being one of the rarest ones in the game to be honest yeah and that only makes me really sad because so if you look in the screen for triumphs it has the titles listed across the bottom and there's a place for one that's not there Mm -hmm. my guess and many others guess is that there's going to be one for having all the titles oh yeah that's worried i'm never gonna get (laughs) yeah that's true um I know there's been speculation too, uh, which thinking further on this, I, I heard trials mentioned um, because mm, could you know, be there's one. one for Gambit and stuff like that. Yeah. But trials could be incorporated into the Crucible, I guess. Yeah, Crucible, I never thought about I guess that one. Maybe or maybe not. But it would. I hadn't. I hadn't heard or thought about that one for getting them all. Yeah, that would be amazing. That would be difficult. Yeah. So just just for me, just because of that Crucible, the. Um... The Riven's Bane one is going to be tough, which is the raid one, um, mm-hmm. especially because you have to do a Petra's run, and that that one's going to be tricky right now because there's some common errors that boot people. I mean, I, I don't oh, yeah. think I've done a raid yet where somebody didn't get booted, mm-hmm. um, so that's really problematic. We're kind of trying to wait out till they sort some of that stuff out before we try that. Some of the other stuff yeah. for it isn't as bad. It's like. You know, do a raid with all Titans, do a raid with all Solar, all Arc, you know, different stuff like that. Those aren't too bad to do. And then, you know, do the ch- do all of the different challenges and stuff like that. Like, that's all achievable, but that Petra's run is going to be the tricky one for me. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. Yeah, definitely. Um, I want them to. It's cool, though, man. I do, I do love how rare these things are. I actually have yet to come across a Guardian that has one. Uh, any title, I know the Gambit one is is probably the. the I think that's the most common seen. one right now. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I've, I love, yeah, I love I how difficult these are. That have them on like social media, but I have not personally run across anybody, mm-hmm. which is cool. Yeah. Like I think that's what they want. You know, if you're sporting that title, it's a it way should they feel prestigious. They yeah, I love that. Yeah, very cool. I'm looking forward if I, to that. If I one. do happen to get the Crucible one, I want it to be like, oh, like somebody goes and inspects me before a like, match. Oh, this dude like, is oh, unbroken. You know? Okay. Yeah. All right. What up, dog? So, kind of like when you see Luna and Not Forgotten, you know, just on an even right. higher level. Yeah. Absolutely. So, very cool. Um, yeah, that's a that's a lot of what I've gotten into this week. I um, I did buy Red Dead Redemption two. Yeah. So there's yep. so much hype there. So I uh, I played a few hours so far. I just loaded it up last night. Uh, I hear it takes a couple hours to get like into the open world. Yeah, you're going to need a few hours yet. to get through the, uh, yeah. the beginning of the game to kind of learn. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they kind of put you through different activities in the game to, to teach you as you're going. Yeah. Um, it's, it's a slow paced game, slow burn. Mm-hmm. I don't know. It's, I was talking to some of my friends and up your alley. it seems like a cool game and it's something that I think I would enjoy, but it's also, it's intentionally monotonous. Mm-hmm. And I think I'm a bit spoiled with games like destiny and um, even with open world games, games like Assassin's Creed and Far Cry in their most mm-hmm. recent iterations that are like these constant, like reward center ga- gameplay loops, you know, yeah. where you're just like, it's all action all the time. It, yeah. At your yeah. I mean, it's definitely more of like a, 
uh, one like all in role playing experience as far yeah, as the character goes. Because yeah. I know even in this one, people are on the fence about. I mean, you have to feed your character, right, and groom your character, take showers, yeah, all um, that, because man. that can have different effects. Um, which I I usually end up loving that stuff, and I've actually been in that yeah. mood right now where I've I've been wanting to really dive into a single player game again. I kept telling myself I'm like I'm gonna wait on Red Dead. I'm gonna wait. I just bought Blackout, which I'm I played this week. Um, I'm really enjoying Blackout. It's fun to jump in there. I've talked about how it balances well with Destiny, but so does a single player game. And I'm like I pretty much decided this reset. Like I'm I'm probably not gonna wait for Red Dead. I haven't bought it yet, but I have this feeling that by next week it will be installed on my playstation yeah. so i loved the first one and i love um usually i totally dig like the full-on role playing of your character and having to do those things so um and something about that settings cool a lot of times i like more like modern settings with with things but for some reason red dead just works i love the horses i love just seeing like the videos where you can you leave your gun you can leave your guns on your horse and this or that like i yeah. love getting lost in those the this world in particular and, um, and i'm not so. um I'm not averse to it yet. I'm just, I get this feeling that it's not going to be as fun of a return on my time when right. there's so much that I want to do in destiny, like enjoy. Oh, yeah. Like not as just a grind, not because I feel like, Oh, I need to go play destiny. Like there's, there's things I want, like I want to do. And so I'm like, okay, but if I'm going to play Red Dead, you know, I'm, I'm going to sit down for like three hours or so, four hours. Mm. I'm like, oh man, really but I could get, get somewhere. this, this and that done in Destiny, you know? Oh dude, it's, yeah, no, it's I know exactly really what you tough mean. tough to pull away. I'm almost certain if you went back, I'm sure to many episodes ago, like even a hundred ago, at some point we said the same thing. Like again, uh, I could remember thinking that and definitely probably saying it. It's like you get in there and you really just want to get lost in this world and, and do these things. And then you're thinking like, especially with the, the way forsaken is now and there's so much to do. You're like, what you said, you're just like, wait, yeah. I could, I could, I could have gotten this done in these last three hours. I could yeah. have done this. So, you know. And w um, one thing I really thought about this week with Destiny that is putting it in a great place for me is how much fun the sandbox is right now mm -hmm. since the weapon change, like the weapon slot changes happen. And we have so many cool new weapons to use that have interesting perks and different types of perks that you can play with the like the core gameplay like just the sandbox the guns the the power fantasy the 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 abilities and the supers there's so much there that's just solid man like no matter mm -hmm. what you're doing that is so fun to do and to play that i just i'm looking for reasons to do that it doesn't matter what i'm doing i'm having fun killing aliens no matter yep. the setting or the circumstance and completely agree that's you know that was in a tough spot for your one of of destiny 2 where there was there was good aspects but it tended to get stale because of the weapon situation because of static rolls and because of the way the slots were just different reasons why it, it wasn't as versatile and now that it's so versatile and flexible you just never run out of a different way to tweak and try a different mm -hmm. loadout or a different subclass. We have all the new supers and there's so much to do and so many ways to do it. It's in such a great place. And I just find myself thinking about, Oh, I can't wait to get in and, you know, play with this gun tonight and get on yep, this super, agree, you know? And so, I mean, that's what makes destiny work. Mm -hmm. Um, you can, you can have all the activities in the world, but if they're not fun to play because of the core mechanic, it wouldn't matter. And the reward. Yeah. The loot. Yeah. So, um, I don't know. I just found myself thinking about this, that this week when I was just kind of daydreaming about shooting a gun, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> a certain yeah. gun. I'm like, <laughs> man, like it's in such a great place now. Um, and I'm enjoying it a lot. So, you know, destiny, Two has a lot going for it right now in that regard, and I'm looking oh, forward yeah, to what else they can do with that. You know, as as go any guardian, and you know, uh, 
our our play style, especially in play times with Destiny, how much we love the game. Like it's a very exciting time. Um, and then you know when you try to pair with it, um, how big games are now, you know, and and you want to complete them. And when something's as big as Red Dead and and you just have so much to do in your other favorite game, it's it's a tough balance, you know. And limited yeah. game time, <laughs> limited game time. Yeah, I think it's, not doing this full time. I think it's one of those games yeah. where. I'm 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 probably gonna end up, you know, kind of jumping in maybe one or two times a week, you know, and just kind of chipping away a little bit at a time because I'm not gonna be able to sit down in three hours and get as far as I like, mm -hmm. and so I'm gonna find myself saying, well, yeah, you know, I could take tonight and play this, but I, you know, I'd almost rather go and have all this fun in Destiny, and so I don't know. We I, I think it's a cool game, but it's not going to perfectly complement my first addiction. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll see. Yeah. I need to play that's, more though. That's where, you know, there's a lot more for me to explore there. So we'll see. It's like I mentioned last week or the week before with blackout. That's where it does that. It is a great thing. I jump in with my buddies and play three or four, um, passes and we try to get first. And if we don't, then it's like, all right, we had fun. Let's go jump on Destiny now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For <laughs> sure. Know? So, And I still haven't even cracked into uh, the new Call of Duty Zombies, which I'm really interested to do, but mm -hmm. my buds were like, depth there too. hey, you got to get this. Let's play this weekend. I was like, oh, Red Dead just launched. <laughs> I don't know. So at some point, it's I got to go play year. the new Zombies match or maps. Check those mm -hmm. out. You know, yep, it's I the fall, even man. Attempted to dive into there. It's the fall. It's it's release season. Yep. It's you know these problems. Well, that's the thing. Nowadays, games come out all year round, but it's always the case. We get more now throughout the year than we used to, like big titles. Um, but now, yeah, I mean, it, it's always been the case in the fall. Yeah, yeah. it's just there's, there's it's usually just a lot overload. of big stuff packed into the fall that you know I usually catch up on half of it in the spring you know, mm -hmm. which is yep. fine. Like I'm cool with that with most games, you know, play, play stuff as I go and just catch up in the spring gives me plenty of things to play through the year and kind of be selective about just playing stuff that turns out to be great, you know? Yep. Yep. So definitely. All right, man. Well, why don't we do some dirt fam discourse before we wrap this up? Yeah, definitely. We got uh, a tweet, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. What, uh, what's this Guardian got? So uh, at Philly Rhino on Twitter uh, tweeted, Dear Bungie, any chance a barber can make an appearance in the tower? Possibly a plastic surgeon? The war is over, and I'm willing to play Top Glimmer for some cosmetic work. Thoughts? <laughs> I mean, how we long are we going to get in into Destiny until we get a way to change our character's face without creating a new character? <laughs> Yep, I think uh, it seems like with Forsaken, um, there's uh, up till Forsaken, at least when D2 launched, many wanted them to work on many other different things. I think we're finally get to a point where the community would be okay if uh, we focused on something like this. And yeah, dude, how many different times have we talked about this? I, for one, I, I'm one of those players, those gamers that spend quite a bit of time in their initial character customization menu. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I don't really, other than maybe changing my hairstyle would be cool every now and then. Yeah. Um, cool. I do get into like the whole fashion thing. Like uh, I do get into that and, sure. and what I'm wearing and different stuff. Yeah. But, Destiny, uh, it's more about the armor and stuff than mm -hmm. what's on your face. Yeah. But, but I, I know there's guardians out there that like made the Joker or something and now they would like to maybe, <laughs> Do something different, and I totally get it. I mean, two um, out of three of my characters are just silly. <laughs> I mean, really. Like, my main original warlock was an Awoken warlock, but he had, like, crazy colors and a, a tiger tattoo on his face. And I, I kept them for D2 <laughs> just out of, like, solidarity. I'm like, this is my main guy. Like, he's just going to have to look like this. That's uh, so funny, man. and then I made my hunter. He's, he's a, he's a pretty boy. He's got fancy eyelashes and lipstick and 
just you know because hunters are are sassy so i made <laughs> i made my hunter a human <laughs> and uh he's just he's just fabulous you know but yeah. i'm cool with that and then my titan is uh is a exo you know and he just looks cool just mm-hmm. got cool exo features and i, I don't know i just kind of went with what i thought looked neato but yeah that's that's funny man yeah my my Titan's a male human with a mohawk. He's got a little mark on his face, and I'm totally nice. cool with him. Um, I would change the mohawk here and there, maybe if yeah, I could. Yeah, maybe if you change um, the hair. Yeah, change the hair. My hunter, I actually wanted to be a female. Um, I just like the idea of uh, agile um, yeah. ninja hunters being mm-hmm. you know, female guardians. I think that's cool. Uh, I actually like tried to make her look like my wife, which <laughs> I, like was not too bad. Um, there was, there's not a lot of options as right. we know in destiny's character customization. Can't exactly um, change their facial yeah. features and stuff. Uh, I think when I did that, I was playing guild wars at the time and I, I made a alt character on there and I did the same thing. And that's, uh, I don't remember which one I did first, but at some point I, I just decided I was going to try and make a female that's character funny, look like my wife. And then, that. uh, my uh, warlock is an exo. He's just like a, a Zavala looking, no hair like exo. And I'm, I'm, man, I'm happy with the way all of them look. But I'm not playing this down at all. I think at some point we need to see this in the game. Make it yeah. costly. People will pay. Just even do if you it's think just that glimmer. it should cost silver to do that, or oh, do you think I, I don't that think they so. should just no. have it in the game? I think it should just be in the game. Yeah, I don't think it's not like changing your gamer tag or something. I, I mean, I could see where they maybe could do that. I don't think the community would be a big fan of it, but I don't think so. I think make it cost like 50,000 glimmer to mm. change your character. You know what I mean? Something mm-hmm. like that. I mean, we're always looking nowadays. I mean, I'm I'm running low on glimmer way more often than I used to be, but uh, make it something like that. Um, and I think it would be cool. I mean, it's just, you know, it's part of an RPG game. We want more RPG elements in Destiny. Yeah. yeah. Um, so there you go. That's a way to do it. For sure. I like this. Well, we can always talk about. We this. gotta keep being the squeaky wheel. Squeaky wheel gets the grease. <laughs> so don't let this go. What else we got Good in dis- discourse this week, dude? Yeah, I uh, I just thought of this randomly throughout the week. I wanted to throw this in here, just talk about it for a second. Um, my own dirt fam discourse. Um, I don't want to get into this too in depth. Um, we talk about leaks and this or that and credibility of them periodically. Um, but there has been a lot of stuff uh, coming out from that Reddit user who's been right many, many times in the past. And one of the things he kind of mentioned was the f- the future of Destiny and Destiny 3. And we have gotten some official stuff in articles, uh, maybe not saying exactly, but from what we understand, it seems as though um, we're going to get year three of Destiny 2, just like we did with Destiny 1, and then possibly Destiny 3, or however they're going to implement that after that. Again, guys, none of this is 100% confirmed, but just in the different feeds, it kind of seems like maybe that's the way it's going to pan out. So with that, I was listening to another podcast um, just this last reset. I want to say it might have been... It, it was Colin Moriarty. You remember him from, mm-hmm. um, I, I like, he, he's got a PlayStation podcast again now, and I, I really enjoy him talking about PlayStation. He knows his stuff. And, uh, I didn't, I hadn't realized, but, um, the CEO of, um, Sony basically, I mean, we know they're working on a PlayStation. We, we I guess I won't say we know there's, there's all the talk about how long consoles are going to be relevant. Um, anymore and when it you know maybe it'll turn into stream based gaming something of that nature who knows where the technology will go Um, but he said in an article um, basically uh, and I quote at this point what I can say is it's necessary to have a next generation hardware Um, so and speaking to consoles obviously Sony CEO talking about PlayStation so um, and this is maybe I'll get it right Kanishiro Yoshida Sony CEO. Nice. So it got me thinking, dude, um, Colin on his podcast, and I couldn't find the source on this, but he said um, that they they said something along the lines of a time frame of like three years is, is what they have projected. Now, that's not to say that the next console is going to come out in three years, um, but I mean, the talk has started. Like it's, it's really 
really begun uh, at this point. And it got me thinking, man. I mean, it's, it's not rocket science, but it would make sense. I, for me, I didn't realize. I'm like, I feel like we still got another five to ten years out of these co- current gen quote consoles that we have now, not next gen anymore. Um, but we don't, man. Like we've been in this cycle for a bit now, and, and I think ten years, you know, isn't isn't exactly. I mean, we're used to like a ten year cycle with consoles, and it's not necessarily quite that long these days anymore. So it's it's feasible to think, you know, within the next three to four years, we would get these next gen consoles and Long story short, it, it got me thinking about, you know, if they're going to launch Destiny 3, when do you do it, right? Mm-hmm. Um, you don't, do you want to run into that thing again where you're catering to two different um, platform generations? Um, yeah, Definitely you could not. get, right? I mean, that was a headache for them, you'd think. Now, granted, all the people who didn't upgrade to the next consoles, they got all those players, all those guardians. It's cool they could still play, and they they got that whole player base, and then they got everyone else that that upgraded to the next gen. But you know, I mean, we we played through all that and and lived through that experience when they couldn't do certain things because of this or that. And you know, I don't know on their end how I would imagine they didn't enjoy that. And I don't know if again if the the um, player base side of it was worth it. Um, but it just got me thinking, dude. I wanted to see what you thought. Like, uh, I wonder if whatever Destiny 3 will be, they are aligning with uh, next generation hardware. Um, I'd like to think that they are going, you know, a lot's changing right now um, mm-hmm. in terms of the future of the hardware, um, the demands for uh, frame rate increases the demands for 4k and hdr mm-hmm. content um is That's all a, a big technological demand on developers and then for online games like this um the ch- the quickly changing world of of cross play is is certainly got to be a, a big item on their list you know i don't mm-hmm. know if it's a priority for them i would think so um, but that's definitely got to be something that they're thinking hard about and talking about and all of that could change really fast. You know, PlayStation has said that, um, their work with Epic on Fortnite and crossplay is a beta mm-hmm. and it's, it's basically them trying this out, see how it could play out and how it could work on a technological scale and, a certainly I'm sure a financial impact and how that plays out is going to affect a lot of other games down the line. And so the hope for the consumer would be that we get some type of cross play or cross save. And uh, probably the best time to do that is with a title release, but it could happen sooner. Um, Right. You never know, but I think that we're definitely going to be in for some changes when the next, um, generation shows up um yeah. could be a whole Definitely. different landscape there's just so many question marks and you know we don't know from their perspective what would be best you know do you do you want as a developer of a major title like this do you want to release with a console hardware launch like that do you want to do it the year before do you want to do it the year after when you know um um Things have settled in a bit, and maybe people have figured out how to develop for the hardware a little bit more. Um, and then there's the whole timeline factor. I mean, it's just, I mean, Destiny 3 needs to come out in a certain time frame. And wherever all this lands, I mean, that's, I mean, they're already talking about all that, right? And then the other question mark is, is we don't even know how Destiny 3 will be delivered to us, right? At this point, you um, go with the, the standard full iteration boxed version of the game but who knows maybe they'll do what we've talked about and and what we think might be cool for destiny is take more of like a world of warcraft um um perspective with it and just release major content updates for it maybe while still calling it destiny 3 but it's more of like a a bigger forsaken that launches um just updates the game massively you know um but you know there's whole marketing pieces to that and everything so Anyways, man, it's just a random thing I thought about this week. I kind of wanted to throw at you and see what you thought. It's just so much. Um, it's always fun to be a gamer, dude. And 
it's been fun in this console generation like many before and it's crazy to think we're i mean we're already getting to just on the eve of new hardware before too long it's it's crazy really i feel like i was just going to gamestop and getting my launch playstation and xbox so it feels like two years ago um which obviously was not the case it's been longer than that <laughs> yeah so anyways exciting times man i mean hey little you know, ways to go before we see anything like that but not knowing the future means that there's a lot of potential right yeah definitely. so hopefully you know experiences and technology and everything else uh, only gets better i mean we i don't remember if we talked a lot about it but i'm i'm most excited right now for project x cloud and what mm-hmm. that can do for a game like destiny um mm-hmm. just that stuff so evolving technology. and you know the capability like to have the possibility that i could be in a future where i could boot up destiny anywhere and play with everyone mm-hmm. sounds awesome yeah it does yeah so. yeah and you know i think that's kind of the things that have been talked about before the speculation is technology like that again who knows it, it's the future um maybe we're one console generation away from something like that um but dude how how amazing um technology is crazy dude i mean we used to i always i always say our generation um just shy of like ataris and things like that I mean, we've experienced so many different consoles being in our mid thirties from regular Nintendo all the way up to where we're at now. And, uh, I mean, we used to buy those cartridges, man, and have to blow in them if they didn't work. And I mean, there was not day one updates and patches every week. And you just, that was the game, man. If there was a, a bug in it, it was there. It was, it was there for the remainder of its life cycle. (laughs) So yeah. it's, we've come a long way, dude. It's nuts, really. So good stuff. Future is bright. Let's hope. Yeah. Well, I do miss uh, some Super Nintendo Mario Kart, though, man. Those, those, oh, GoldenEye mm. on uh, 64. We could go on and Look on. Look ahead, man. That, <laughs> There's so many good things coming. Forget about the past. Yep. Uh, <laughs> speaking of the future. Got to give it a shout out to all of our patrons that yes. have and continue to support us in the future. Yeah, we've got uh, two or three in the pipeline right now out on the website. You guys, uh, just an uh, announcement. Go check your messages. Yep. Send us your gamer tags. Yep, 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 <laughs> yep, 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 yep. I think we did have one that we can give a shout out to. Tree Fitty for Me is a new... There you go. Uh, patron this week. We want to give you that shout out. Yes. Yes. If you don't know what a patron is, go to patreon.com slash destiny reset, where for as little as a dollar a month, you can support the production budget of our show. Aaron and I do this for fun and for your listening pleasure. And our patrons help us uh, make sure that that can happen week after week. So Mm -hmm. if you become a patron, you get a few things. You get a shout out on the podcast for your support. You get your gamer tag on our website. And finally, you get an invitation to our Discord channel just for patrons and supporters. So go to patreon.com slash destiny reset. Become a patron today. Yes. Thank you guys so much again. Some of you have been so kind to do so. Um, be sure to send us your gamer tags. Yeah. Thank you guys and gals and everyone else. Well, man, uh, I guess it's time. Yeah, I think so. I think it's that time. Why don't you tell us uh, where people can find you? You can find me on all the social media places, Twitter and all the things, at Aeronite with a zero. What about you, man? Perfect. You can find me at Cyborg Sasquatch on Twitter and Mixer. And finally, you can find us at Destiny Reset on Twitter and on the web at www.destinyresetpodcast.com. Dot com, your source for all things DRP. And uh, I got to give a shout out to those listening on Apple Podcasts with some yes. spicy reviews this week. We have to give a... Uh, we try to visit the other stores periodically, guys, so we got a shout out for a UK listener. 
Patagast PS4. Is that like Radagast? I think maybe. The Wizard. There might be something there. <laughs> also, all right, what, what was the real pronunciation? Oh, no, I did, we didn't prepare. Was it, it wasn't, we said Eganator, and that wasn't right. No, it was, um, uh, it, it wasn't Eganator, was it? What was it? Oh, Egan, man. Well, you're going to get like 50 shout outs that are wrong for a oh, fan member. Gosh. You know who you are. <laughs> yes. And we know who you I are. We, I think now. we've chatted with you in the Discord. Um, that's okay. All right. Thank you guys for your reviews. If you're listening on Apple Podcasts, please come leave leave us a review. Helps us get seen by more listeners looking for a show about destiny. Of course, that's what we do here. So thank you for those reviews. That is what we do. Yep. All right. You're in the right place. You're in the right place. (laughs) Okay, bud. You playing tonight? Yeah, I'm going to No, I still got things to do, man. I'm going to go jump on for a while. (laughs) Saturday night. This is fun. Same here, man. Yep. Same here. All right. All right, guys. Until next week, have fun playing Destiny 2 and take care, Guardians. <laughs>